Good morning, um, VP Howdy, distinguished guests, colleagues, students, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Majd Saqqar and I'm the Assistant Dean of Research at Carnegie Mellon University in Qatar. I'm honored to be amongst you and to be given the opportunity to tell you a little bit about our research perspective at Carnegie Mellon in Qatar. First, I'd like to acknowledge and thank uh, Dr. Howdy and Dr. Dirar Khouri for putting this great forum together and I hope it's the first in many to come. Um, as you can see, I had to change the title of my talk specifically because of some profound events that took place recently. And I'd like to extend Carnegie Mellon's warm uh, congratulations to all of us. This is an exciting time to be here and the future brings a lot. So um, the title is to talk about soccer to science and how can we all help sustain Qatar's leadership. Let's start by looking at the region. Uh, historically, um, the Levant region has been, uh, has been producing a lot of scholarly output, but more recently, this part of the world has been surging to the forefront through many different uh, initiatives. Let's take a look at Qatar. Uh, all of you know this, but for our visitors, Qatar is a small country in this part of the world with 1.7 million inhabitants, um, a very rich country, and a lot of its GDP currently comes from hydrocarbons. Uh, Qatar has 15% of the world's natural gas reserves. This is important, but we all know that this is a limited resource. So Qatar has put together the Qatar National Vision 2030 to transform the economy into a knowledge-based one in 20 years. So they've earmarked 2.8% of the GDP to research. How does this rate in this part of the world and worldwide? Well, the Arab average is 0.2% and most of it is in agriculture. This has to change. But if we look at the rest of the nations, we see uh, specifically the OECD countries are at 1.7% are at and that shows that Qatar's investment is quite significant. Okay, so this gives you uh, a nice overview on the accelerated progress that's been going on in Qatar. We've had a graduate student that takes these pictures once every two years. And then you see, besides just the building, this just signifies the building, Qatar has been transforming itself in, in, in an aggressive fashion. So, so what is its vision? Um, in 2008, the Qatar National Vision has been released uh, that by 2030, the economy will be transformed to an innovation-driven, knowledge-based economy with these four pillars, human development, economic development, environmental development, and social development. Every 10 years, Carnegie Mellon revises its research strategy, and at the same time, in 2008, Carnegie Mellon released its research strategy, uh, and the foundation is foundational research, artistic creation, and creative inquiry. And this focuses into five uh, directions. The first being improving human health and the quality of life. The second, understanding and engaging global societies, economies, and cultures. Transitioning to an environmentally sustainable society. Transforming science and society by advancing information, computation, and communication. And finally, understanding social and human behavior. So if we try to compare the two, we see that they're very much aligned. Human health, quality of life, societies, economies, cultures, environmentally sustainable, science and society, social and human behavior. So how's Qatar trying to achieve this? From our view, we see it as an ecosystem. Um, we see that there's been major reforms in the K through 12 and then those graduates move on to higher education institutions, starting with the National University, Qatar University, to all the branch campuses. The graduates from all of the branch campuses are looking for careers, they're not looking for jobs, so hopefully they can go and pursue the multinational and, uh, companies and the startups at the Science and Technology Park Free Zone, where a lot of applied research is taking place but we can't stop there. We also want to do basic research and that's through the programs of the QNRF. Uh, basic and applied research can take place. And then moving on, there's the SIDRA Medical Research Hospital and then the scope specific research institutes in computing, biomedical, environment and engineering uh, and energy, excuse me. So how is Carnegie Mellon 
playing a role in all this. We, uh, Carnegie Mellon is an active member of this ecosystem. We collaborate with all of the schools through outreach uh, programs. We collaborate academically and uh, research projects with Qatar University and all the branch campuses. We have uh, ongoing uh, uh, relationship with the folks at QSTP. We benefit from all the programs at QNRF significantly. We're starting to create relationships with SIDRA and we hope for uh, a very healthy and synergistic growth with QCRI. And Dr. al Magaramid will tell you about QCRI next. How about our international collaborations? Well, we have local and international collaborations and it's uh, about 80 of them to date. And it's good to tell you that it's beyond just Qatar and Pittsburgh, although those are also extremely important. We have relationships on, with tech companies on the west coast of the US. We have relationships with Ghana, Tanzania, in Europe, Spain, um, in the Middle East as well, India, China, Japan, Singapore, and Australia. We're very, uh, we want to make sure that we maintain this and actually expand it uh, healthily. How about some details? Uh, currently, the faculty have 18 uh, national priority research programs, uh, projects funded by QNRF. They've secured 45 uh, seed projects, and our junior faculty and postdocs have three Young Scientist Awards from QNRF, and our undergrads have 17 awards. So the total is about 82 projects, totaling $20 million to date. This has produced over 200 publications, uh, enough funding to hire 40 full-time research staff, we have 80 international, uh, local and international collaborating institutions, and to date we have attracted four international conferences to our campus in Qatar. How about undergraduate students doing research? Well, at Carnegie Mellon, we believe that the earlier, the better. And we engage the students uh, in, in, a, in a big way. So we have 12 students uh, from 2007 till now, because that's when we had our first students be, become juniors. Um, uh, finish 12 uh, uh, honors theses, and this is, these are not mandatory, these are uh, voluntary, but our students choose to write the thesis in their final year of study. We have 10 students who have taken uh, 10 research-driven independent studies. We have so far from undergraduate students 11 publications, and 40 students have attended international conferences, and we have uh, done over 50 research internships at our campus in Qatar. So since this is the computing segment, I was asked to focus on the computing research at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, you know we do business administration, information systems, computer science, and, and, and other. So I'll talk here about the seven specific areas of focus uh, that we have. So first, robotics. With robotics, we build uh, robot, robots for the oil and gas industry. We build robots and program them to deploy them in disaster situations. And then we design multilingual and multicultural robots as well. Another area is human language technologies. Um, Arabic technologies is extremely important for us. We are right here and we have the Language Technologies Institute. So we're bringing these two together to, to create a lot of activity in this area. So we're thinking about the Arabic search engine within QCRI at Carnegie Mellon and others, and also doing automatic translation of Wikipedia text from English to Arabic. Cloud computing is a new area. So we're thinking about uh, how can we use cloud computing for scientific applications or how about having a public cloud in Qatar that will jumpstart innovation, but of course at a low carbon footprint. Programming languages and security is another important area for us. So uh, crazy ideas and how do we program matter to very real ideas in uh, web applications and how can we make them secure so that we can enable banking, uh, e-government, and e-health. Networks and, uh, and sensors. This is everything within the communications domain, protocols, uh, models, and, and we also like to monitor pollution, uh, climate change, as well as security systems. Um, assistive technologies is, a, is a, a big area for us and we've, we've attracted a lot of attention. So building literacy tools, low cost learning methods, um, as well as uh, managing diabetes. 
And then we have a nice core group of information systems faculty who, do, who are uh, research active and do research in health systems, information systems, and innovation in education. So instead of taking one or two projects and digging deep into them, I wanted to give you a quick snippet of some of the projects that I'm talking about in these areas. And then if you want some details, you can attend the sessions later on today. So uh, Professor Brett Browning is working on sending robots inside gas pipes that have lethal amounts of H2S. And that hopefully will improve uh, safety and maintenance and the efficiency at the gas plants. Professor Bernadine Dias is programming heterogeneous robots to deploy them in disaster response areas and how can they collaborate as multi-agent systems and enhance the situation while, while working with human beings. Um, our work in developing HALA, the, the bilingual multicultural robot receptionist, and you can imagine all the applications that uh, could benefit from, from this. Um, our core group in, in developing core human language technologies, and these will impact Arabic human language technologies and English human language technologies to enable multilingual processing in many different areas. Cloud computing, we've started the Qatar Cloud Computing Center with folks at Qatar University and Texas A&M, and we're thinking about, uh, actually we are running uh, protein folding uh, models as well as video analysis to help the diagnosis of primary cilia dyskinesia, which is popular in Qatar. Um, then we have crazy projects. How do you program a billion programmable uh, devices that are at the nanoscale so that they can take a specific shape and carry out a specific function, where Professor Cervasato and his team are working on that? And then the web. The web is becoming popular, but at the same time, it's becoming complex. And if we look, a large percentage of the attacks are from cross-site scripting and information leakage. And Professor Sanz is, has developed uh, Quest, a programming language that has a built-in security model that controls information flow. Uh, Professor Abu Ghazali and his team are working on camera nets, which is an intelligence system that monitors events and sends interesting content to an operator. This can be used for surveillance, traffic, safety, and others. Uh, Professor Razak is trying to understand interference from this variety of wireless devices that we are using. So we need to understand this interference so that we know how to mitigate it. Professor Dias has built a multilingual Braille tutor that allows children to learn Braille in a fun and efficient manner. And then Professor Lal and, and a large group of collaborators are developing Aladdin, a new uh, pedagogical model that benefits from technological learning methods. And the idea there is to improve the, the proficiency of Qatari elementary students in learning modern standard Arabic. And then finally, we have our, our previous dean and his graduate student worked on the diabetes assistant, a tool that allows diabetics to monitor their caloric intake and upload it so that their nutritionist and physician can also look at, at what's happening so that they can manage their illness. So, uh, suffice it to say that we believe the research at Carnegie Mellon and Qatar is bold, multidisciplinary, impactful, and very relevant to this part of the world. So I'd like to conclude by saying Carnegie Mellon and Qatar's forward-looking strategies are well aligned. CMUQ is and will continue to be an active member of the Qatar ecosystem. CMUQ uh, is doing and will continue to do bold, multidisciplinary, impactful, and very relevant research. And we must, we must involve and train the next generation in, in the research that we do here. And hopefully we can take all of this and pour it into a culture of innovation in Qatar. Looking forward, Qatar has some very important milestones coming up. But as what we need to do is we need to work heavily on expanding the multidisciplinary research amongst all of us, and we have to bring in industry and governmental institutions into this ecosystem in a big way, so let's expand the research ties with industry and strengthen involvement with governmental institutions. And then we must not forget that all of this research should go through tech transfer and hopefully lead to some good IP as well as startups. And with all of our efforts, 
we can contribute to Qatar successfully achieving its very important goals. Thank you very much.